at this point I have this result. I can show classes, and I have rows of data, and a pencil to edit a row. The way this will work is uh, similar that if I want to delete a class, I need, its, I need its CRN, I need its ID, and I can delete. Well, to edit, I need the same thing. I need a particular <coughs> ID to be able to edit the rest of the data. That's what we need to do. Before that, I want to do one little fun side thing, and then we'll do the update functionality. Do you notice that when you click Show Classes, it just suddenly appears? Well, we have some basic built-in animation into jQuery. I want instead for it to fade in. Instead of simply appear, I want it to fade <coughs> in. So the way we do that is we go back to the code and where we've got the show classes, show table of classes actually, we've got at about line 135 where we've got the element of div results, you know, write that data into that element. That's the part where we actually want to do a simple fade in. After we, after we write the data, then we want it to fade in. So that same element, L div results, in the blink of an eye what we first want to do is to hide the element. So we've got data, hide the table quickly, <coughs> And then dot again, fade in, capital I, parentheses. In the parentheses, we then give it an argument of how long in milliseconds. So if I type 1,000, this will take one second to fade in. With that data to show, hide that first, then fade it in. It's just a, the way we, that's the way we have to do it. Hide it first, then show. If we don't have this hide part, it won't quite fade in. So that's just a little icing on the cake. Let me test that out. If I click the show classes, look at that, fades in. <coughs> if a person doesn't have that ability to have this, for some reason if it doesn't work for them, it doesn't matter. The data will still display. But because of jQuery, we have the method of fade in. We, have, we can fade things in, we can rotate things, we can do some basic animations. When we have jQuery mobile, we have data transition equals flip. Well, this is us doing it manually. We have dot rotate x, and we have a bunch of things. This is how we can make an animation manually. I actually think that's too slow. So I, won't, I only want to take, personally, I only want it to take a quarter of a second. So 250 milliseconds. It's just going to be a quicker fade, but instead of suddenly appearing, we have a subtle bit of user experience here in that it fades in nicely. But not so long that you try people's patience. So the difference there with one quarter of a second, and there it is. So that's fading in. Yes, we do also have a fade out. You would have to do it the opposite way. Your element dot, uh, dot show dot fade out. You have to force the element to be visible first dot show and then a dot fade out with some amount of time. We'll do that later once we delete a row or delete the whole, the whole data. That's one thing we have to do as well, delete the whole database to start over. So for that one, we'll have a really slow fade, like four seconds, where you see your data just uh, fading away into obscurity. And we'll do that later. Right now, I still want to edit my, uh, my row of data. So let's say while we're in the show right here, what I next want to do is we've got our table that we're showing, horizontal rule to be able to delete data. Let's create, let's add more to the string to then create another couple of fields. So add to the string 
two horizontal rules. That's not open and close. That is two horizontal rows. And then keep adding to the string. We can make it look nicer. We will make it look nicer later when we have this in jQuery mobile. But right now I'm making some simple two horizontal rulers. My idea is that after the table I'm going to have um, some input fields. An input field for the ID, for the instructor, or for the class, and for the instructor. And then a button to actually edit. There's three possible things for me to edit, right? If I mistype the class, that's one of the things I want to, to, up, to update. If I mistype their name, etc. So I have three possibilities <coughs> that I can change for this data. Once I've, once I've specified what I'm going to change, then I click Edit, and this will change. So I'm going to create these input fields after the table. That's why I've got these two HRs. So we will have input button or input type button. Value edit class ID BTN edit class. That's the button that will actually do something. I'm kind of switching these around. I have the actual input box first to delete, and then the button. So the input, then the button. Here I'm switching it, just visually for interest. The button first, and then the edit, the input fields. So after input type button, We need another input, type text, placeholder, some uh, CRN, an ID in edit CRN. Another input field right next to it. Input type text, placeholder, an example of a class name, ID in edit class name. Then another input type text, placeholder, an example of an instructor's name, and then ID in edit instructor. Right after that, input type text. Uh, placeholder, an example of a class, math one ID, edit or in edit class. That's my class name. I could call it class name, or I can keep it short. Whatever, however you remember those. And then one more input type text. Oops, need to finish my quote right there. Be careful. Type quote quote text placeholder quote. Be very careful there. Go back if you did it like me. Type text open and close. Then comes the next input, where it'll be edit, in edit, inst, or instructor if you want to type it completely. This is all still within the double quotes. Input type, text, placeholder, uh, 
an example of an instructor and an ID. I've got this sort of internal syntax that I've make that I've made up in edit inst. So it's just repetitive there. I've got three input fields. They're all of type text. They have a, a placeholder that makes sense to give the, the user some guidance. And then some ID. The ID is arbitrary, but this makes sense to me. This is an input field to edit an instructor, to edit a class, to edit a CRN. Internally, we've got underscore ID. We've got C class and C inst. To see how this looks, I can run it, show classes. This is this is my functionality to edit a class. Type a CRN or you know, edit the CRN, edit the edit the name of the class and edit the instructor. So next we need, to, we need to do something very similar to when we deleted a class. We need to first retrieve what has the person typed into each of those boxes. Then we have to check, is the CRN that they're trying to work with, does it exist? They may be trying to edit a class that doesn't exist. In the first version of what we're going to do, because of our time for the moment, we, we're going to need to type these things in ourselves first, and then we can edit. When we come back next time, we'll actually make this pencil work. We're going to click this to fill our fields in here to be able to edit them. But our first step is to make sure that this, this works. So we'll start to retrieve what the person has typed into those fields. We're going to need an event handler. And we're going to need a um, a um, function similar to before. Let's back up to where we've got all our event handlers at the top. We need to do something very similar to where we had this. L button show on click, L div results on click, then the dynamic button. We're going to need to do something like that again because we're again trying to use a button that doesn't exist until a certain time later. Is that about line 44 or so? We're going to do the same thing. We need to target the element that exists and then the element that doesn't. So L div results on. on click again, and then the button that we just made, comma, and then something, function, update class, edit class, update class, or something. Click. We created an ID of uh, BTN edit class. Is that what we call it? Yes. So that uh, BTN edit class we 
you've got that button that actually edits the class. Comma, execute the function fn update class, edit class. <clears throat> the event of clicking the dynamic button inside of the non-dynamic element, then launch that function. So we need to define function edit class. We'll go back to where we were in the code. We'll create function, uh, function edit class. And then we need to start to retrieve those values. So we'll do something like this again. We'll retrieve the values of those dynamic fields, the values of dynamic fields, and we'll store them mm -hmm. in variables, and then we can work with them. back at the bottom. Make sure you're after your function of delete class. Back to the bottom. Function fn edit class, curly braces. This is end <coughs> function edit class. So in this function, we will create three variables, which are based on the values of those input fields. So var, dollar, val, uh, so we have the fields. Edit CRN in edit CRN, so we'll call this we'll call this val temp CRN. That's equal to the selector pound dot val. So we want a temporary variable based on what they've typed into that dynamic input field. And again, it's dynamic, but it works because by the time we get to this point, the field exists. Give me the value of that dynamic field, put it into this temp variable, and I do that again for class name and instructor. So there's a comma here because I'm reusing the same bar keyword, make one variable, and then make another variable, val temp class. And that's set to, well, that's coming from the selector of pound in edit class. It's val. And, comma, I want one more, val temp inst is equal to jQuery selector quotes pound in edit inst its val end of line semicolon the semicolon ends the var creations it's exactly the same as our delete delete class although that one was only retrieving one element, the, the particular CRN. This one is doing three at once.
So editing a class is one of the more complex things that we can do, editing a record. Once we set up the algorithm, then it works just fine, but setting it up, it takes a little bit. So we're actually going to wrap up in a moment, but we're, we're building up the steps. We're setting up a way to retrieve what are the things you're trying to edit. Then we have to check, are you trying to edit a class that exists? That's the, the, the dot get. That, would, that could be a failure, that could be a success. Okay, you're editing the class that does exist, so then we have actually a way to update the class. And the way Pouch works is, if you're changing an existing record, an existing document, that's the moment then we have to deal with underscore rev, with revision. This is version 2 of the data. This is version 3, version 7 of the data. You can update the data as much as you want. Internally, the database will also store which version of the data are we dealing with. So it's a little more complex. We'll, we'll pause here then, but we want to make sure this works. I guess if you kind of want to wrap up with one final thing to make sure it works up to this point, you can do some console output just to show yourself that we are retrieving the val temp crn comma val temp class and val temp inst can save it, you can run it. Type some things into those three edit fields. They don't have to be real data yet, we haven't set that up yet. But type something into those fields and click edit class or whatever we called it and check your console. If what you typed into those three fields appears in the console then it works so far. If it didn't we'll do lab time. I'll put my uh, code into the, the folder to this point. When we come back next time we'll continue to set this up because we'll I'm going to probably write another 50 lines of code for this to work. And in total, we're at uh, about 175 lines. So it's still a little program. When we get it to be about you know, 300 lines, it's still a little program. Because obviously big programs are thousands of lines of code, millions of lines of code. Let me test if mine works. What I'm trying to get is that when I show class, I get all these fields, I'll type whatever into them at the moment, doesn't matter, edit the class, out in the output I get the three things I typed. Eventually we'll set it up that I click a pencil, these three things will automatically go to these fields, and then I only have to actually change it. So if I click on this pencil, it'll put this CRN right here, and nothing here. Then I fill it in for real, click edit, and this will edit it here in the database and in the table. But at least we're able to retrieve what we're trying to edit and then we'll make it work properly soon next time. I'm going to save my work into the network folder. We'll do some lab time.